Solitude and Company is a film that's it's uh, one projection and it's one hour long and it's projected into the top of the gate of the city so it's a very old space so it's a film about something in the past and about people's dreams and it's projected in a space which is also a kind of imaginary space because you can't imagine when it was built really I mean it's 500 years old so uh, so you know it's kind of an interesting juxtaposition Well, I, uh, um, normally I make work about something that uh, I find, but this time it came to me and I was asked to make a work about a place that is kind of abandoned, this kind of abandoned uh, factory towns that is a big depressed area around Lille in northern France. And uh, I was trying to think how to express the difference between the people and the place really that the place has this huge history that the people don't know about so and in fact the factory that I filmed has been closed for 20 years and somebody who lived beside it told me that he had never seen inside it so it's kind of like a huge empty space that people live beside it but they never see inside so it's a kind of imaginary space and that's sort of where I started and then I started to look for people sort of able to express their ideas about it and uh, I began to find this kind of Algerian community that uh, in France they are not really given mental space, they are given physical space and a lot of times they are, it's quite a middle class community but uh, the people uh, I don't think you hear them express themselves so I started to ask them about their dreams and for them to tell me what they dreamt about and uh, their dreams oftentimes they refer in some way they refer back to Algeria so it was for me it was more what is the mental space that you are in when you are in another physical space or what do you imagine in your because your mind is kind of free your body is in one place but your mind is free so uh, that's what I was sort of trying to talk about sort of the freedom of the mind to think of things And the people, I found all kinds of people, from children through to old people, through to some very crazy people that I couldn't include. So, for instance, there's one man who thinks he is the president of France, and uh, he thinks he can change things in France. And some of what he wants to change is real things, like the climate and... Uh, the relationship between people and some of it is totally crazy thing so it's all kind of mixed up in his kind of dream world so there's also something kind of surrealist about it so I was kind of thinking a bit about surrealist films also well I think the fact that it's not filmed it's only sound that's a big thing because it allowed me to because originally I wanted to film people's dreams but I realized that it was going to be very difficult with these people so I thought it was better to deal with sound and then the difficulty for most people is to be in the present when you are doing something you know you tend to think of it as being in the past but I ask people to physically be in it so to imagine they are there doing these things so they basically have to concentrate and be in the dream when they talk so they work with an actor to improvise methods and to... So there's a lot of acting methods and I have a sort of Shakespearean English actor that comes with me to things. So he has a series of acting methods that allows him access to get people to work with themselves really. So they are kind of my protagonist for this project. Yeah, the factory, the film is shot. The idea of it was 24 hours of sort of dreams that was my idea 
So, and then I had one thing that I wanted to do, which was the whole of the length of the factory. I wanted to really make it seem as enormous as it really seems. And I began with this footage from an archive that I found. That was the first thing I found when I went there. And then I met this um, Alger Algerian DJ, quite well-known guy called DJ Bulawan, who's young, he's 25, you know, so he works all over the world, but he lives there. So we started to talk about him doing a soundtrack. And then I was thinking how to animate this because the film was shot instead of 25 frames a second on film, it was shot at three. So then time passes very quickly. And every 10 minutes you have to change the reel of the film. So each, so it was shot from one side of the factory 10 minutes, another side of the factory 10 minutes, and then at the end, this kind of tracking shot that goes right the way across the factory. So um, it's basically so that all the editing was sound and there was only three cuts in the picture, except for the archive footage, which we cut a little bit. But but that was all found, so it's all from... The other thing I quite liked about it is the archive footage, if you look at it, there's some parts that are like 1910, some parts that are like 1950. So it's all different technologies and periods. It's not one period and one technology, it's many different ones. So uh, that was kind of interesting, yeah.